Hello folks. So if you have been on this channel before, I have talked about artificial intelligence and how it is here and it is here to stay. And in the context of a web developer, a programmer, a content creator, you cannot just like ignore what ChatGPT has been doing lately, you know? So there's a lot of perspective, a lot of take on it. I wanted just to show you my view, my point of view, and how I'm gonna use it as a natural extension to my research. Because the very first thing you do as a content creator is to research whenever you have a subject matter you wanna talk about. So I do uh, a lot of research around Angular. My name is Adi, and if you have not already, please subscribe if you wanna see some more content like this. And let's say I wanna implement a token, an auth authentication token using the JWT library and I want to do a tutorial, an article around it. But the very first step is to me to understand more the subject matter. So I'm going to go to our friend that I'm calling like my uh, artificial friend right here. And I'm going to ask it a few questions. So I have a few questions prepared. So let's just like take the first one, which will be in Angular, what is the most efficient way to implement JWT token authentication? All right. So that's just a question. Let's see like what's going to say for it. So... Um, okay, and it's giving me ng-auth Firebase UI, which I don't really like because I want to do it without any library. Let's just give it, let's just ask it another way to do it. Okay, so there are several ways to implement JWT authentication. I like the fact that it's talking about the HTTP interceptor. And on top of it, it's even like spreading out an example for it. Nice. So let's see, and, and the very first thing that I want to uh, highlight here, I'm, I don't care about how uh, accurate the code is going to be, because ChatGPT themselves tell to you that sometimes the answer might not be accurate. So to me right now, I'm just in my ideation process. I want a structure. I want something that I can feed off. And, uh, and that's why I like the, the most important aspect that I like about this tool is the conversational aspect of it. Because it can like uh, retain context and based on that context, you can have follow up question. And with the follow up questions, like now the article is like uh, getting um, um, uh, structured in my mind. So, yes, this is very cool that it's like putting out some questions. But what I want to really focus on is not the questions, but the structure. I will take these uh, snippets. I will run them but I will be very diligent about it, making sure that this is the right way of doing it. So it has given me a lot, just from one question here, you know, there are several ways to implement it. It gives me not only like the first block, and then it talks about the HTTP interceptor, which is great. Those are things that I like expect to see because uh, I'm researching, but that doesn't mean that I'm not, uh, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, um, I don't have uh, an experience in the subject matter, okay? And I see these things. And then on top of it, it, sh it shows me like how to use the interceptor. This is very good. Now I'm going to build on this context and give it like a use case. I want it to show me an example of an expiration, uh, a token that has a 24 hour expiration with it, okay? So let's do that. I have my second question here. Can you provide a concrete example of what that would look that of what that <laughs> sorry of what that would look like with a 24 expiration token. So this is very specific. And now we're going from like you know the wide questioning to like getting more specific. But what I like about it, I did not have to open a second uh, Google window or anything like that. I can build up from like the very first question that I had. That to me is just priceless. So let's see how it's gonna handle that second part. So, and it's very polite. It says, sure, here's an example of how a JW token with a 24 X. And you see, it still has the context of being inside of Angular. It did not start like, you know, with just a random example, you know, it's doing it within Angular because that's the context that we have provided in the first place. To me, that's the power of this, okay? So it's gonna do that. And let's see here. Let's give it a moment. Okay. 
and I'm seeing like, you know, the usual suspects here. I have some observable, you know, it's using like dependency injection here. Okay. Let's do all of that. And it's using GWT decode for an, ex for an earlier example. It was showing me a code that had like moment JS. So let's see if I can like just ask it. Um, can we modify the example and avoid using, let's say I don't like the GWT decode library, GWT underscore decode library. Okay. Let's see how it's going to take this. So now I'm getting like more and more, you know, specific. So let's see what's it. Yes, you can avoid library by using, okay. It's like going to use another one. It's going to propose me a different one, A to B function to decode the depth. So, okay. So basically, um, a token is something that's getting encoded and you're going to, uh, you're going to need some other, you know, uh, way to the, to decode it. So it's prob probably, I, I don't, I'm not even sure what the A to B library is, but you see that the conversation is holding the context of the original question. So to me, I cannot emphasize how much uh, powerful that part is. So it's going to do that. And let's see, okay, let's say that's a very good example here. I'm getting like, you know, a lot of value into this. Of course, everything here is going to be double checked. Okay, and I'm going to show you a cool trick to double checking this, like, you know, um, 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 uh, if you're going to do any type of academic paper and anything like that. Let me see in my pool of questions if I have something else. So now I want to ask it. This is like assuming that I have one module. Like, let's say now I have this huge Angular application with a lot of future modules. And I want to see how to make sure that every single time I send like a request, it can be intercepted properly and then have like that, um, um, uh, the token properly added to the request. So I have this, uh, this, this, this question. Now, if I have multiple feature modules and the complex routing system, how do I ensure that the auth token is always attached to my server request? Okay. So let's put that in. And what is my friend going to do? So it's saying like, okay, if you have multiple, okay, it's, it's even talking about higher order components here to wrap your routes and handle the authentication lo logic. And it's giving me, it's giving me like, you know, um, an example. My, my, my question might be, Hey, uh, what is a higher order component? That might be something that I can have now as another uh, 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 subject of content creation. It, I might know it, but my audience might not know it. So now I, I, we, I did not even know that there, it was possible to, to put the two together. Now I have another idea on top of what I had. Okay. So it's showing me one that has the route and everything like that. Okay. It's very verbose, which I kind of like because I have a lot of things to, uh, to look at and I can just copy this code. But if I was not happy, and that's the thing that I want people to understand. And now it has a, a network error. Uh, let's just do a quick try again here. It's going to have some network error now because the chat GPT is being used by millions of people. I mean, I don't know if they can handle like the, the, the network surge, but let's try it one more time and just see. We are almost at the end of the exercise anyways, but you get the gist of it. The conversational part where you can have context because typically you will open up like every single research will start with the Google, with the stack overflow. If you like, uh, um, in the, in the programming, like, you know, industry, and then you will like check one page and then you're going to take some notes. You're going to take your own knowledge. You're going to go check a book. You're going to check a video. And all of those, you can just like, if you just know um, 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 uh, a cool way of questioning this tool, all of that can just be like, you know, embodied in this conversation you're having with this magnificent AI right now. And I told you, artificial intelligence is here to stay. So let's say it's still having problem with this question. I'm just going to move to the next question, okay? So the next question would be... Um, 
I'm going to introduce I'm going to introduce a whole new concept here because Angular now has standalone components that have been like uh, stabilized since 14.2, uh, uh, I believe. And in V15, they are now like, you know, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are an approved API. And I was even joking with some of my friends last time that for standard, because we always find acronym for things, standalone components, we're going to call them stacks. So I'm going to introduce the, 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 the acronym stacks which I know that ChatGPT maybe has not seen yet, and I'm going to see how it's going to handle it. So let me just add this question. But Angular has recently introduced standalone components, STAC. Can you provide an example where we attach to the interceptor, where we attach the interceptor, actually, where we attach the interceptor to a stack? Let's see how it's going to handle this, OK? So it says that I have too many requests. Please slow down. So I think that, you know, it's getting like a little bit overwhelmed because all over the world right now, people are using this tool. So let's give it a little second. All right. I don't want to, I could just refresh it, but I don't want to lose the context. Okay. So let me go ahead and um, retry the same question. Where we attach the interceptor to a stack. Okay. Let me try that. Hopefully this time around it works. And I'm not surprised. I mean, ChatGPT has opened, uh, you know, the floodgates because at this point you can ask it about <laughs> almost anything. As long as I think it's like 2001, 2021 and, and beyond, you can pretty much ask it about data points about anything. So I'm going to try one more time. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to just give you like two tips and my closing arguments. So let's try one more time for this question. Fingers crossed. Are you going to do it? Yes, no, maybe. Drum roll. It's thinking, it's thinking, but I think it's overwhelmed. So, you know. Okay. So they're having network issues right now. That is understandable because they're having too many requests right now. The last thing that I will do, okay, is in my questioning, the last question that I'm going to, the, 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 the way that I structure my last question would be something like this. Finally, can you provide articles and video resources where I can learn more about this subject? So now I'm expecting the AI to go and package a subset, you know, of uh, research um, articles and videos that I can just have as a reference. Instead of me having to go and chase them down, this type of question is the one that I'm gonna have and that's gonna just be in my keypad and that will be one of the last questions that I will feed to an AI like this. So if I do this, let's see if it's gonna be able to respond to this. Um, and I'm sure, you know, <laughs> I don't think they're going to have any problem in raising money and then they will be able to fix um, this AI issue. I mean, this network issue and probably they're going to have a pro account where you're going to have like, you know, you're not going to have to uh, to deal with this kind of stuff. But really what I wanted to be able to show was that it really depends on your use case. And if we go back to the to the. Um, to the landing page, it tells you the cap the capabilities that it has, but it underlines the limitations. So there's a lot of videos out there or a lot of tweets out there where people are saying, you know, be careful about this. No, the AI itself is telling you, be careful. I'm not pretending that I'm going to be 100% accurate and I have a limited data set, even though that might look amazing, but this is a limited data set. And I'm not the holder of the truth. At the end of the day, you, the person who's like uh, using me, have to do your due diligence. And you even have um, 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 uh, the luxury 
to give me new information. You can tell me if it is correct or not. So if I just give it like a stupid little question like, what is, well, there's no stupid question. <laughs> what is two times two, you know, and uh, come on, it can handle that. If I give it a, a, a simple question like that and it gives me something else, you know, I can always tell it, hey, you, you made an error. So the thing is, uh, what I wanted to, 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 to underline today, okay, two, per, two times two equals to four. And here you see that I can say, I can add, I can add more feedback or I can do try again. You know, it, it, it really is telling you this is a research project. So take it with a grain of salt, but take advantage already of the benefits that it provides with the converse, conversational aspect that it, I cannot even see conversational. So if I was to say down, for example, it will tell me provide additional feedback and that helps training like, you know, um, 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 uh, the algorithm here, like I can put my feedback, I can put like if it is harmful or anything like that. So please walk with it. But instead of like turning it down or like saying like, hey, this is not good or whatever, use it for your use case, do your due diligence, you know? And then if you're gonna use it to create content that you're gonna share with the rest of the world, make sure you double check everything that it puts out and then, you know, make sure that you validate the content of that. AI can make a mistake and then we can look away and say, okay, uh, but if you are a content creator, you don't have that luxury. You have to give give people like, you know, the right information. So that's my take on it. I am super excited about this new tool. I am super excited about like the possibilities of what it can do and how it can enhance, you know, the content creation like workflow. I'm in love with it already. I hope that, and I know that it's going to just only get better. And I can only encourage you to embrace it and see how it works for you. Until next time, take care.